Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Cindy Banyi for Dr. Cindy Speaks. This is the daily diatribe for December 22nd, 2022. And this podcast is being recorded at 1016 p.m., a little bit late in the day. But actually, there is a lot of things going on in Congress. So this is one of the reasons why I was waiting for later in the day to see all of the things that had happened. So one of the things that was just released was that the January 6th committee's final report was released. And so we'll look forward to seeing that tomorrow. That's basically breaking news here at this point. And that should include all of the information that is being handed over to the Department of Justice and the criminal referral that has been made for Donald Trump and his cronies in relation to the insurrection that they incited at the U.S. Capitol and the prolonged lie about the election being stolen. So we'll look forward to seeing that tomorrow. So other things happening in Capitol Hill, because this is the, this is a pretty busy lame duck session. And and just in case you don't know, lame duck session is the part of Congress at the end of the session, right? So we had the midterm elections in early November. So we know what is going to happen in the next Congress that is going to be sworn in on January 3rd. But Basically, the time now between the election and the end of the year here is the time for basically the Democratic-run Congress to get what they can done and pass a lot of things. One of the most major things that needs to be done is the to pass a spending bill. So this is always a lot of fun. It's a kick the can down the road where the government is about to run out of money, in fact, it was supposed to run out if there was not a budget approved this Saturday. So basically Christmas and Christmas Eve, and then would start furloughing and all sorts of other crazy stuff. Thankfully, it looks like that is not going to happen. And a huge uh, and bipartisan bill, omnibus spending bill has been passed through the Senate and is slated to pass through the U.S. House tomorrow. It has a lot of things in it. And the good news is that it funds the government through the end of fiscal 2023, all the way through September 30th. And it is a huge spending bill and doesn't include everything that everybody wanted, but it includes a lot of things. So for instance, it includes funding for Ukraine. That's 40, let me see, I wrote it down here just to be sure. Funding for Ukraine and 1.6 billion additionally to go to my area here in Southwest Florida and around Florida, 1.67 billion for the water treatment, drinking water and sewage plants here, which were significantly damaged, resulting in sewage running through all of Southwest Florida. So we're looking forward to that. It had an increase in defense spending, so the Hawks love that. And it also included, interestingly enough, it included the Electoral Count Act, which is another bipartisan piece of legislation that came out of January 6th with the murkiness surrounding the role of the vice president in the transition of power and the counting of votes. So now it is hopefully going to be codified into law after passing through the U.S. House that the vice president's role is clarified as being ceremonial only, and that clearly if there's any other disputes, they go to the Supreme Court. So that is a really important thing that is coming out of this omnibus spending bill. So some of the things that did not get into The bill, the omnibus spending bill, included the extension of the child tax credit, which is something that progressives like me were really hoping for because it helps American families. The Equal Act, which looks at disparities in sentencing for crimes, so that did not make it in this time. The Safe Banking Act did not make it in, and that was related to cannabis based businesses allowing them to have access to banking, which they currently don't because. Even though cannabis is legal recreationally, medicinally, and in the large swaths of the country, it is still a 
drug that the federal government regulates. And so you cannot access the banking, safe banking system. So that was another thing. And also something that did not make it in was the big tech regulation. So those will be fights for another day. So looking forward to that passing and our government being able to function because although there's a lot of problems and there's always room for improvement, actually our government is pretty awesome. Our constitution is pretty awesome and it works really well when we have politicians who want to make it work. So that is some good news coming out of the Senate. Something that came out of the House today that was somewhat surprising is another piece of bipartisan legisla legislation. So this is actually really, really great because it shows how much the Democratic leadership has been working to across the aisle, how many issues there are that do cross party lines and that compromises can be made and progress can be made when people are really willing to come to the table. And this act is the it is a act to reform the FBI, the way the FBI handles child sex trafficking or child abuse cases, sex abuse cases in particular, okay? Pretty much a no-brainer, just trying to make that easier. It came out of the congressional inquiry and testimony, mostly from those U.S. Olympic medal gymnasts who were victims of Larry Nassar. And so this is a no-brainer for a lot of people, but it just went through the U.S. House and passed wide bipartisan support, except for 28 Republicans voted against it. Interestingly enough, it's the very, very far-right conservative part of the party. Weirdly enough, it's these are the people who are also, who have a tendency to talk a lot about child sex trafficking. They use it as the boogeyman with, when it comes to the border. They use it in their attacks against the LGBT community, calling people groomers and things like that. You would think that people who think that's a really important issue would be all for making sure that the, uh, the institutions that investigate these kind of crimes are able to do their job and do held accountable to do their job appropriately, but no. So the, this includes the likes of Jim Jordan, Lauren Boeber, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and my former opponent, Byron Donalds voted against it. Now, so it seems like this is going to be that that block of Republicans who are just going to stick it to what's going on. My former opponent, and, and as far as I know, none of the other people who voted against the child safety bill have said any reason why, except for just a big old fuck you to the system. So I'm hoping that there's some accountability for these people. And I guess what I said on Twitter was that, you know, Byron just owes this to Jim Jordan after all the, the child, the sex <laughs> crimes that he was overseeing. And Jim Jordan had funneled a lot of money to my former opponent. Interesting on that. So more on stupid things that are going on in Florida. We see today another interesting thing happened that does also have a connection with my former opponent is that Ron DeSantis followed through with the threat that he made to remove an elected Broward County School Board member. And he did this on the grounds that he, because he had a felony over 30 years ago, and he had his rights restored, but he apparently did not have his right to run and hold office be restored. Now, keep in mind that this is a very murky subject, a little wheel back for those who are not fully up to speed on this issue. In 2020, Floridians, I'm sorry, 2018, Floridians had voted to have rights restored for felons and to make, that's now in the Florida Constitution, and now people can go through a process to actually get their rights back. Now, this used to be something that could happen, potentially, depending on these secret hoops that you would jump through, and there was clemency boards and blah, 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 blah. But this was trying to make it much more transparent of a process was the point. Okay, of course, Ron DeSantis and his cronies came in and they made it less of a um, clean cut process. And in fact, Byron Donald, who by the way, is a double felon and no one has any idea what happened to those felonies or if he went through a rights restoration process 
he's not been very forthcoming for that. And if he went through a right to restoration process, did he also go through the right to run and right to be elected process? We're not really sure. That's where this kind of comes in. So Byron Donalds, interestingly, when he was in the Florida legislature, voted for this piece of legislation that went through that made it harder for returning citizens to actually get their right to vote back, to have their rights restored which again is funny since he himself is supposedly a returning citizen. But of course, he doesn't look at it quite that way because he had some kind of other gilded path that we're not really sure how he got those rights back in a month's time in 2004. But anyway, yeah, so this is a really big problem. So anyway, Byron Donalds voted to make it harder for other felons to even get the right to vote back in 2018. This is what had happened. So this fellow got thrown off the school board in Broward by Ron DeSantis, and then Ron DeSantis pointed somebody who was favorable to him on that school board. Now, of course, Broward County's very democratic, so this is just Ron DeSantis really putting in, finding a reason to eject somebody off that board and stick his own person in there. But it has all these other political connotations, again, with Byron Donalds, as well as adding an additional layer that nobody knew. I of all the qualifying things that I have heard in the state, I have not heard anything about getting your rights restored to run. Okay, this is like literally something Ron DeSantis just made up. It's just, he didn't, there's no, there, there was no additional statute. There's nothing that says that you cannot, as long as you have, you're voting, like that's fine. And he's made that even more complicated with the legislation that's, adds these additional fees that nobody really knows how. And it's really just made the process, it doesn't, it has actually destroyed a process. Like there is no process now. It's kind of piecemeal. And he's also using that, by the way, this is the same thing that Ron DeSantis had used just before the 2022 midterms here. He actually went around and arrested a bunch of returning citizens saying that they voted illegally in like 2020 because they didn't follow this process that they never really articulated after they passed that law in the face of Floridians who had voted for rights restoration. So this is an ongoing thing with Ron DeSantis. It's really awful and horrible. And it also, but I think for the record, I think it's horrible that Ron DeSantis threw this guy off. I do not think that somebody who had their rights restored should be harassed for their, their felony from 30 years ago, okay? This man was elected, he should be elected, okay? But here's the thing, when it comes to applying this, let's apply it to everybody. You don't get just to apply it to the Democrats. Let's apply it to the Republicans then. So I am demanding that we have an inquiry into Byron Donald's right restoration because I have not seen any documentation that that really actually happened. All we know is that the felonies that are definitely on his record that he is admitted to, that people have found, have somehow been taken off his record okay but did he go through any process was there a clemency board this should all this is all information that should be available and it's not and if he also did that let's clarify and understand the process did he go then through that secondary process here in florida where he got his right to be elected put in place as well so let's do fair is fair right if we're going to go after democrats who are being elected in broward county let's make sure that other people who have already been elected um also are following that same role right Ron DeSantis and Byron Donalds. Anyway, that's the end of the, that is a diatribe for today. And I'm going to get back to my Christmas baking and hope you and your family are having a wonderful day. We've got cold weather coming in here across the country. Hope everybody is staying warm. And here in Florida, we're going to get hit too. So we're going to have a bit of a cold and chilly Christmas and hope that everybody is um, ready for that. Anyway, have a great day. This has been Dr. Cindy Banier for Dr. Cindy Speaks and the Daily Diatribe. Bye bye.